Today, I'm really happy to be talking about my thoughts on Agalos on the Nintendo Switch. I've been wanting to talk about this game for quite a while, so here we go. The current build of this game is version 1.02. The edition that I have is the regular retail edition. Inside the retail box, you will find the game card only. It's been a while since the game was launched and I wanted to just have a chat and if there are any issues or any requests. But before we get into that, hello everyone, welcome to the Quest to Major Major's Quest to talk about games. If you're one of the 100 plus subscribers on the channel so far, thank you very much. It's literally the only way this channel can grow. If you like our content, please click that like and subscribe to the channel. The studios involved in making this game are Storybird and P Cube. The game itself is a retro inspired 2D platforming game, or as the back of the game box says, a classic non-linear adventure. You explore the world fighting different enemies, including bosses, which are quite big on screen, collect in-game monies to buy better equipment and items. There are powers in the game which typically will allow you to unlock and access new areas. Story wise, it's low on story which is to be expected but big on gameplay. This game style is very much like Wonder Boy or Shovel Knight, just on a smaller scale. The main menu is simple, clean and obviously retro themed. There are two options at the beginning of the game, adventure and options. There is space here for more options but I have not unlocked them yet. That's if there are more options to unlock in this menu. But it does seem like there will be. Options wise, you can only change the language in the options screen. Shame there are no options to change the color palette of this game to make it look like a Game Boy game for example. Also it would have been nice to see some screen filters. This game is a single player game so there is no multiplayer for the game at this time. When it comes to the Switch version and switching modes from handheld, docked and tabletop, the game is compatible with all three. So far there are no issues in switching in and out of any mode. Graphics wise, the art style definitely was what interested me in the game initially. The 8 slash 16 bit inspired graphics are really nice. The sprites also look great on screen. The size of the characters are really good and the graphics don't seem to have any issues at least that I could see. The game has vibrant colours, interesting characters, enemies and levels. Performance wise, the game does seem to run well in all modes. There are some hiccups in frame rate now and again but nothing horrible. The controls are basic, but I think they are meant to be. Now basic does not mean bad in any way. The character movement is spot on and the fighting in the game is fun yet simplistic. I have to say that I was surprised with the level of polish when it came to the controls. It feels really good to play. The controls seem to bring out muscle memory from other retro games that I'd played before, which I think is an accomplishment in itself. Audio wise, if you like retro music, I think you will enjoy the tracks in this game. They are really nice to listen to. Several parts of the game have songs that you just end up humming or singing to yourself. I think the sound effects are what you'd expect from this type of game. When it comes to crashes, I'm glad to say I don't remember having any crashes during my gameplay, which is great. The capture button is compatible with this game, both for video and for images. When it comes to requests, there's only one thing really that came to mind. Screen filters like I mentioned before. It would be nice to have more options in the game in general, but at least an option to change screen filters would have been nice. So a CRT filter, an arcade filter, that type of thing. So is the game still fun and am I still playing it? I'm not playing the game as often as I did when I first got it, but I do go through moods when it comes to playing games. When I crave to play a certain game type, I tend to binge play them. When it comes to platform, this game is definitely one of my go-tos. I would say that this game is overall a fun experience, especially the Nintendo Switch version for me as it really seems like this is the best option for you to play this game as you can play it whenever and wherever you want. Lastly, in my view, this is a very good example of a retro game made today. If you're not aware of the retro console limitations, you could believe that this game was made in a different era. 
era. The world is well made, it has a good main theme, and the gameplay is fun to play. The game having upgradable items was a surprise to me and it kept me interested in continuing the game. Upgradable items was a good surprise and it kept me interested. The fast travel system was also a great choice to include. Now like I mentioned earlier, this game is similar to Wonder Boy and Shovel Knight, also Monster Boy on the Nintendo Switch. To finish off the video, I can say that I had fun with this game and I'm glad that I now have Agalos the retail edition in my collection. I really hope that in the future we will see a sequel to Agalos as I think the game deserves it and it will be interesting to see what the developers could do with the sequel. So what do you all think of Agalos on the Nintendo Switch at retail? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? How would you change it? Please leave your impression down in the comment section. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like our content, we have a few videos talking about games, mostly arcade and retro on the channel. If you'd like to watch these, please take a look. If you like our content and you want to help the channel grow, please click that like, subscribe and notification bell for more of our content in the future. And until then, thanks again.